morning, everyone. Welcome to the second day of the EIP Agri Seminar on Turning Forest Innovation into Practice. Thank you very much for being on time. We will start very soon with um, a very interactive session to wake up, to energize, and basically to prize all those of you that have arrived on time. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here today. Before we begin, I would like everybody to turn on their video. As you know, we are replicating a presential event. This is not a webinar. So thank you all very much for being here. Um, before we begin into our first breakout session, I would like to welcome you all with some um, reminders. The first reminder is, and also an information, is that we will send a list of participants to everybody after the event is finished. Uh, with all the contacts of all the participants that, that gave us uh, permission to share the email. Those of you that did not uh, give us permission to share the email, if you want to change your opinion, feel free to do so and please inform us today. Um, we also want to remind you that today we are going to have an event until 12.30 Central European time. And during this time, we will focus on how can we actually work with the innovations on forestry, uh, in order to improve forest management in the next five years. We want to understand, replicate, adapt, amplify, and really learn and go as deep as possible during the day of today, during the morning. So before we begin, I would really like to ask you all to turn on your video. <clears throat> Those of you that are driving, I saw some of you are still driving, coming back here, coming to maybe to your office. So <clears throat> I would like to, invite you just for a quick, a quick um, a vote on how much do you think is the role of forests in solving all the um, economical problems, challenges, social issues of Europe? Do you think forests are really important in these all challenges of climate change, mitigation, economical development, social inclusion, immigrants, integration, whatever comes to your mind. If you think forests have a really big role in this, please raise your hands to the top. If you think it's intermediate, go down. And if you think it's just a little bit, you just do something like this, okay? Can we have a show of hands? Okay, thank you very much. Very interesting, huh? So um, we are all very forest uh, activists, I see. So thank you very much. So we are now not continuing anymore on plenary. We are going straight ahead to a breakout session that will work again for you to meet each other uh, and to energize a little bit. The motto for the discussion, we will give you around six minutes, is basically with around six people is to, for you to share what was the most inspiring thing that you got from yesterday. So think a little bit on the yesterday day and what was really inspiring to you, uh, share with each other, and then we come back to plenary. Okay, so we have six minutes. I hope you have a great time. Here we go. Jack. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I yes. hope it was a pleasure for you to listen to the stories of others. When we share what is inspiring for us, I think we re-inspire ourselves again. Uh, this is what happened to me just by sharing my inspiration. So I hope you also had a similar feeling. Um, we have a couple of minutes now to remember the day of yesterday and maybe share one or, or two things that were inspiring to you from yesterday. So yesterday <clears throat> we started by listening to a presentation uh, by Pierre Bascou, then uh, welcome by Pacom Melona Yenga from EIP, then we listened to the presentation from Gerard Weiss, our coordinating expert, uh, who is here with us, with us today as well. And then we went into these team discussions in these seven different uh, challenges for European forests. Um, then we got back together in plenary, <clears throat> and then in the afternoon we had these uh, needs and offers um, that will also be shared to everybody. And then we had the open space. So my question to you is, does anybody, would anybody like to share um, 
let's give maybe one or two or three voices something that has inspired you yesterday. Do you want to share? You can uh, speak up so you can unmute your microphone and uh, speak. Yeah, maybe I, I can speak. I, I was first of all, so I'm Maria Nuznik from, uh, from the United Kingdom, James Cotton Institute. I was uh, first of all inspired by the opening lecture uh, um, by the opening talk uh, uh, that forestry is now being put in the center of, of policy and in the center of interaction between policy, uh, scientific community and practice. So uh, this is the major point. And then uh, um, this talk was underpinned by case studies coming uh, bottom up from the ground. And it was also very, um, uh, inspiring, I, I wanted to say interesting, but maybe inspiring to observe that uh, we are so diverse in, in Europe, including Scotland. So all the diversity of approaches and that they touch uh, both technological innovation uh, ideas, but also social innovation ideas. And I, I, um, I, I was maybe, you know, coordinator of the uh, SIMRA project on social innovation in forestry and other um, um, sectors uh, or, and in rural development. And uh, uh, my feeling is that innovation is, of course, to be about the forest sector. So uh, forest sector itself, technological innovation, and then interaction between forest policy practitioners on the ground, but also uh, uh, science in the sector, but also communities and doing things with people and doing things for people is uh, crucial. And there were a couple of presentations and today I, I see in the program there will be. So all this collaboration interaction, I think is very inspiring. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Maria. Thank you so much. Great inspiration speech in the morning. This could be actually the, the speech from the coordinating expert. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much uh, for this Welcome. insight and reflection. Does anybody else would like also to share an inspiration? And please, I ask you all to mute your microphones when you're not speaking, otherwise it creates uh, noise. So would anybody else like to share one voice of um, something that yeah. has inspired you? What would I already mentioned in a small group is that I found it very inspiring to hear that apparently although the situation is very different in different countries we oftentimes share similar problems and therefore it really helps to hear the solutions that others have developed in order to come up with ideas that might apply to your area as well so I was kind of astonished by the similarity of the problems that actually occur because working on it I uh, sometimes feel that you're kind of isolated and you're alone with those problems, but it seems that others already had the same thing. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Andreas. So I think these uh, two insights were very good for this moment to remember us and to give us again purpose of why we are here today. So now I'd like to share you a slide with the program of today. Um, very quickly, what we're going to do today is in a way similar to what we did tomorrow, but now different. I hope you like this uh, suspense moments that we do with these videos. So the program for today as, uh, as I've mentioned before, is going to finish at 12.30. But, um, and we have now a moment of discussing in themes again, like yesterday. Um, <clears throat> basically, we're going to have six themes, which are the six main factors uh, for innovation or six types, sorry, six types of innovation. Uh, it, there may be different ways of organizing, but we have organized them in these six types of innovation. And what we want to do is go into these uh, six different uh, themes. So discussing six different 
types of innovation where we can again go a little bit deeper now not in the innovation itself in terms of how it contributed to adaptation to climate change or biodiversity or circular bioeconomy or multifunctional forest management but in the type of innovation itself and then because they're all in the same type of innovation in each theme we can reflect better on the conditions, on the supportive factors, and how can we scale them up, and so on. So Gerard Weiser, coordinating expert, will explain all about this uh, now. So I give you the floor, Gerhard. Can you please introduce us to these different types of innovation, and what is the scope of the discussion for today? Yes, hello, many thanks. Good morning, everybody. I tried to do this in three minutes. Uh, many topics in three minutes. Yes, so today we want to relate the factors for innovation with upscaling of innovation. So we think about, okay, how can we amplify the impact of innovations that we have discussed, for example, yesterday. So in the next slide, we see here how the groups are divided. And as Andre said, we divided the theme rooms today according to types of innovation and that should or here we want to show that it's innovation is not just about technologies such as the drones using drones in forest planning or forest monitoring but innovation can also be many other things silviculture or reorganization or new forms of cooperation like among forest owners or along the value chains, the different value chains that we have in forest. But also new business models, marketing approaches, institutional support, so that would be institutional innovations or social engagement. So we have many types here. And when we, on the next slide, when we think about scaling, a few words about what we understand by that. Next slide, please. So we use different terms such as replication or scaling or amplification of innovations. We can use those interchangeably, but what do we mean? There are different types of this scaling. So scaling up would mean, would mean that single initiatives grow to a grow bigger or to a higher, a larger level. Scaling out, usually means to trigger the replication of innovations by others or in other regions. Scaling deep would be to improve the services of, of certain initiatives. And of course, sustainability is important. So the long-term stability of initiatives. So they need to have internally financial independence or some stable external support and then okay so on the next slide we then come back to the factors because when we think about okay how can innovations and their growth be supported we come back to the factors that we were working about yesterday so like what inspired knowledge financing collaboration because the support measures relate to that so these factors were the, the social aspects that we have discussed and on the next slide we see how support measures can relate to that and so because in a systemic understanding of innovation support there there are measures that relate to all those factors so that is, for example, the provision of creative environment so that there is a motivation to innovate or to provide information to improve knowledge and learning or to provide financial incentives or to support the coordination of the many different types of actors that, that we have heard a lot about yesterday that was one of the also for me, the one of the most important insights, the many different actors that may be relevant and how to bring them together. Well, and I noted here that also 
regulatory improvements in laws may also support innovations and their scaling up, of course. So thank you for, for that. I want to bring yeah, give this as a background for the discussions today. And I, guess, I hope we have very good discussions such as yesterday. Thank you. Back to Andre. Thank you very much, Gerard. Uh, in the next slide, um, I can present to you all the process of what is going to happen today. So some, some people are asking if we can choose freely where we want to go in the chat. The answer is, um, sorry, no. <laughs> uh, you have already chosen before uh, upon the registration. So you will be placed in the place that you, uh, in the meeting that you've chosen. So in, so the answer is more or less yes. So coming back to the, how we're going to discuss and thank you for your flexibility, if you're not in the first choice, but in the second. Um, what we're going to do today is anchoring this discussion that um, Gerard just presented. We want to still anchor this discussion in practical examples, okay? And then start from there, to discuss these processes of innovation, the factors, and what kind of scaling up or scaling out or scaling deep or sustaining do we think is most relevant to discuss in each innovation? How can we adapt it uh, in the different parts of Europe so that we can mainstream uh, these uh, innovations and so on? But we want to start from the example. So we start a little, like yesterday, uh, we go to these different team meetings and we listen to one story. Okay, this is just going to be a little bit like an example to start up. And then we're going to be divided into, uh, it can be four rooms, it can be three, it can be two. The point is that the rooms will be around uh, six, seven people in each room. And because it's not 15 or 12 like yesterday, it's going to be without facilitators. So you're going to be alone or together but without the facilitator. So you'll have to facilitate yourselves, moderate yourselves. You start by choosing who is going to be like the rapporteur taking notes. And then we invite you to start again by sharing a story that inspires you and has potential for application. Because we want to anchor not in an abstract reflection, but in specific, um, in specific uh, innovations that are related to this different six types of innovation that we are talking about. So you will be placed in one of these. And so ref give a story. And then after this, that some of you have shared some stories, then reflect, okay, what went well with these examples? What is actually, what is their potential for replicating? And then the real discussion, how to amplify, how to replicate, how to adapt, how to scale up, scale out, scale deep, like Gerard just provides us with this new, uh, concepts new to some of you or some of us that uh, clarify a little bit deep, the diff a little bit better the different types of replication that we can think about. So after discussing in these breakout rooms with around seven people, we come back to this team meeting plenary to share what you have uh, discussed in the groups of seven and then discuss it a little bit more here with a facilitator support. Okay. This will be from 9.20, it's already 9.25, but more or less from so very soon until 11.20. And at 11.20, we come back to plenary we, where we will listen um, the discussions and the conclusions and the reflections from the different six types of innovations. And we will reflect upon them together. In the end of the event, we'll also have a presentation or some final comments and reflections from DJ Agri. Uh, from Madame Kirsten Rose now. So what I would like uh, to show you now is the next slide where you see again the six different uh, thematic rooms. Today we, we have provided in the chat the links but also the meeting passwords. So yesterday there was some difficulties because of this. So you have here your uh, links already in the chat with the meeting passwords. So what you have to do now, what we invite you to do now is to close this meeting and enter the next one and have a great, very relevant, very interesting, very presential conversation together with your peers. And then we meet again here at 11.20. Okay, does anybody have 
Any question before we go? So you don't uh, go send well. it automatically to the rooms. We have to close uh, and enter again. Yes, you need to close, enter again. You don't need any any log, any mail or anything. You just need to click the link, and then if the password is requested, you put the password. That's it. Yes, okay. Sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you have any problems, go to your plenary. Okay, thank you very much. And it's time to start. Thank you, and let's go. Have great discussions. I think uh, as participants are slowly arriving, we can take a little bit of time to talk a little bit between us. Yes. Um, so actually, I would like to connect a little bit with the forests uh, in your region. And I would like to ask you a little bit like we did yesterday in the pop-up style, like if we were popcorns popping up in, um, in a pot one at a time. <clears throat> maybe saying what activities um, are the activities that uh, are seasonal now in the forests close to you. For example, in Portugal now, in the south of Portugal where I live, the activity is now, at this time, one of the activities is pruning cork oaks. So to connect to the forests close to us, maybe you can share the activities that, um, are now being taken and implemented in the forests close to you. Do you want to share? Yeah. While we wait for the other participants, anybody would like to share? Login. Um, Edward from Catalonia, Spain. Here is a season of uh, mushroom picking. Also, this year is quite bad because the the summer has been very dry, and so the production of mushrooms this year is very very low. So mushroom pickers are quite upset. Have to wait a little bit longer for the rain and heat. No, after it's so cold, then you have no opportunity. <laughs> so yeah, the season is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so any more activities in the forest now? In Tuscany now uh, we most people uh, in pick up uh, chestnuts and uh, also cut um, harvest uh, timber. Good. Thank you for it's also the, the the season of uh, of pick up, picking up uh, chestnuts, which are small and few because uh, of the weather of in summer. Yeah, the dry, the dryness. <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. Anybody else would like to share? Here in Greece, in Halkidiki, uh, this uh, uh, time we cut Christmas trees. We have uh, approximately the 80% of uh, uh, Greek um, production for Christmas trees. And it's well known in, in Greece. Okay, okay, nice to know. So for those of you that are arriving, we are just um, waiting for everybody to arrive and sharing the forest activities that are now uh, taking place uh, close to you or in your forest or in the forest close to you. So anybody else would like to share? You know, in, in Mediterranean countries, cone, pine cones are, are picked for, for pine nuts, for edible pine nuts. So in, in Spain, we have started already in Portugal, but they will start next month until March. Okay. Any more? Anybody else would like to share? In, in Latvia, in Latvia, at this moment is uh, hunting season and also um, <laughs> treatment of young stands. Uh, I mean, this uh, tending uh, and also treatment of uh, young uh, uh, young uh, <clears throat> trees uh, against. Uh, uh, while the uh, damages uh, and also slowly we start the uh, season of uh, timber harvesting, we are looking <coughs> for uh, uh, frozen uh, soil and we hope for that it uh, will come soon. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. 
So one or yes. two more sharings. Here in France, it's also the hunting. Yeah, here in France, it's also the hunting period and also the planting period because we had a very dry summer, so we are planting more in winter time now. So it's starting actively. 20,000 hectares planted a year almost. Thank you, Christophe. Anybody would like to share? Anybody else? Okay, then it's time for us to start. So thank you very much. It was interesting. We connected to the activities in the forest. Uh, I think uh, most of the participants are here or are joining. Um, what we want to do now is to actually see what happened in the, in the thematic uh, sessions. So let's get another suspense moment with a video. Hi, Andre. We are now in plenary. We are 100 people together today at this special moment. Thank you all for being here. I ask you all to mute your microphone unless uh, you are going to speak. Remember that we are 100 people, so we cannot speak all at the same time, and the noises are also not uh, welcome. So <clears throat> the moment uh, of the day is the wrap-up. We want to basically wrap up all the conclusions, all the discussions, all the reflections that we had um, in this um, morning, but also in this one day and a half, in a way. So we would like to start by listening to the presentations from the different groups that basically give us some highlights of their discussions. We want to try maybe to listen to one group, then get a little bit of feedback, and then continue. Um, and do this uh, through the six uh, groups and thematic, um, not six groups because there are different breakout groups, but six thematic sessions. Um, and then in the end, discuss a little bit more. I will count with the help of Gerard Weiss for our coordinating expert for the day. Gerard, good morning. Um, and now I would like to ask to share the screen of the templates uh, of the Google Slides from the teams. So I would like now maybe to invite the speaker, the uh, rapporteur for the team one. Um, I don't know who is the right person. Can good you morning. Present? Maybe in two minutes, good morning. Try to speak two, three minutes maximum. Is that okay? okay. Then we can ask one or two questions. Okay, this is uh, Claudia for the theme one and um, new ways of developing civic culture and technology in forest management. We had a very interesting discussion that was inspired by two experiences with drones. Uh, we, from this discussion, we draw these conclusions. So, <clears throat> first one is hands on experience is key uh, for taking up a tech solution uh, and uh, particularly also the peer to peer interaction. So. Um, forest owners can convince themselves by using the technology and then convince the others uh, by demonstrating it to them. <clears throat> and instead, the role of uh, research and spending time of, uh, on research is more on the big organizations, even though being too big sometimes can be actually a constraint more than sometimes. Also, we learned that uh, old practices are, are also part of the innovation when they can be um, revisited and proposed in a different way with a, that support uh, uh, the challenges that make these old practices abandoned. <clears throat> uh, it's also important uh, to understand that technology can bring uh, complementary uh, mm, support, uh, but we could still have it uh, along with uh, what the humans uh, can do. And uh, in the process of developing innovative solutions, end users must be involved at different stages, maybe in different roles, but they need to be involved. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, since the beginning with expressing their needs, but also then uh, giving feedback on the, on the results, and uh, iteratively reporting back to the developers on what needs to be changed according to what they actually actually need. So, um, in fact, it's really important to uh, 
to share and uh, also adapt to local circumstances. So even in terms of uh, upscaling uh, or scaling out uh, solutions, uh, this should be uh, readapted for, the, for what is actually needed at, at each site. Uh, this redesigned farming systems to include forests, <clears throat> and uh, that's also another conclusion. Then uh, there's also uh, the idea of creating innovation groups for improving technology, so um, making this sharing more structured in groups, and, and then also thinking about innovation as a not just a new technology, but uh, maybe something new on some on so uh, well, sorry <laughs> a new way to to use these existing technologies uh, again to adapt to specific circumstances uh, in different sites. We had two examples: one from Sweden and and one from Greece, and they were converging on some things, but also quite different on on other stuff. Um, so oh, the great. idea of diversification is uh, important. It seems like you want to revolutionize forests <laughs> with so many ideas. So uh, now it's also the time for the people that were not participating in your team to, they were in different teams, maybe to comment or to ask questions. So I would like to invite the people that were not in your team, uh, if you want to ask any question or make any comment to help us reflect um, between the different innovations. Uh, anybody would like to speak to question or to comment? There's Lars, a raised hand, Lars. Yeah. Lars. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I agree with the, the conclusions uh, you had in the team that there are a lot of interesting things con uh, concerning drones and uh, the possibilities we have there. Uh, if you uh, scaling this up a little, I would uh, also make the possibility of using forest machines uh, and then, of course, harvesters. Uh, the information we get there is is very accurate and if you thin the stand, you can get a lot of information that is quite valuable when you are going further in, in uh, when the trees are growing from that stage and on. And then you can also use that information for um, uh, from, from a final cut, which we practice in Sweden. You can get a lot of interesting information on where you have the more valuable slots for production and where you have the environmental values. So you get a complete map of that information, which you can use for uh, for much better forest management. So I would say that is uh, a very important part of the digitalization to use harvester and forwarder information uh, in in practice together with other uh, means uh, that you already focused on here. And if you have laser scanning and if you have a high resolution satellite data, of course, combine this. It's a lot of opportunities there. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. Maybe I give the floor to Gerard. I don't know if you have any um, upcoming question, Gerard, or any comment regarding these uh, conclusions. Is this the final wrap up or? You ask for some additional questions from my side. Yes, just just specifically on this team. Do you have uh, any okay. question or comment? Uh, I have nothing quickly. Okay, so then we continue to group number two. Thank you very much, Claudia. Thank you all the participants in this. We will continue to reflect. Uh, gradually, we will increase the depth of our reflections. So let's hear from the group, uh, the team number two, that was about organizational innovations. Who is the speaker for this uh, team? Okay, so it's me. Hi, <laughs> Katarina speaking. Hello. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we, again, uh, as yesterday, had very, very uh, nice discussion uh, in the team group, uh, in the plenary. And we identified several uh, examples of bottom-up and top-down approaches that work very well in terms of organizational innovation. Uh, some examples on the bottom-up side is uh, that it is necessary to develop cooperatives and also different types of associations uh, that may involve uh, different actors, especially private forest owners, uh, that are somehow trying to achieve the same or, or common goal. 
And uh, this kind of cooperative approach uh, helps uh, especially small individual owners to, to achieve higher targets. Then on the top-down uh, side, uh, we identified that bridging uh, consumers and producers is very important, uh, which may bring uh, higher profits, uh, especially to forest owners, and also uh, to use better the potential that the forests have. Uh, of course, uh, if we look uh, on these ty types of connections, uh, it is necessary to, to involve different types of um, actors as well not only universities and researchers, but also practice, which is uh, the main important actor in every type of discussion on this. Uh, of course, we need owners uh, of forests, we need, ma we need managers, advisors. I stole this word from, from yesterday. Uh, I think my colleague Alexander mentioned that uh, this is some kind of FKIS. It's not just agriculture knowledge and innovation system, but uh, we somehow also involve forestry in here. So this is uh, really nice. Uh, and what was also discussed that if we have only really narrow profile of the innovation team, it is never the best solution or option because if you get different insights and you have different competencies in the team, then you can bring added value to the idea that you come up with. Uh, we also identified a, a potential to be uh, for these approaches to be replicated. But of course, some kind of misunderstandings or uh, some kind of local specificities, specificities need to be taken into account and cleared, for example, different types of environmental doubts or social aspects. Uh, of great help in here are EU instruments uh, and, and uh, different types of uh, projects and programs like operational groups, um, multi-actors uh, projects and, and, and thematic networks as well. Uh, then we have this point of communication and dissemination to society, which is also essential uh, because we need to spread the information, to share uh, and to see the best practices uh, which are in place and could be also replicated. Uh, another important point is policy support, uh, which is uh, very important, especially when starting forest activities and also developing innovations. We had uh, one, uh, one example of vouchers for traveling where uh, you could get uh, from, from some public organizations uh, for uh, visiting your partner, uh, because it is very essential that you, you uh, create this type of connections. Uh, and then uh, I, I also tried to highlight some kind of buzzwords that were uh, mentioned pretty often in the discussion. Uh, again, I'm getting back to cooperation like yesterday, and I'm sure this will come up uh, again uh, today as well. Uh, different types of project needs to bring the benefits for all involved, uh, for all those that cooperate. Then what we highlighted is evidence-based approach. Uh, again, we need to gather local needs. We have to share best practice examples and also to capitalize also on the discussions that we had today and to create partnerships. Then we have to engage uh, people and connect them, uh, for example, also by using uh, uh, digitalization tools and uh, to have a collaborative plan, but also try to be flexible, not just stick to the plan, by, but uh, try to really uh, always bring new ideas. So that's from our group. Wow, Katarina, thank you so much for this uh, very well organized and clear presentation. You did a very broad work in many different dimensions. So is there any comment, uh, clarification questions, questions, challenges coming up from the people in the other teams? I see Eugenia raised her hand. Eugenia. Yes, hello, uh, Katarina. <laughs> it is very pity that we were not present in your group because we would like to, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, all the points that you mentioned that are of our interest, especially the potential forest, uh, to inform the public about the potential uh, forest waste, especially, yes, uh, it's of our interest. Uh, so, conifer, conifer greenery waste that we use. Uh, the important thing is to inform the public about uh, its benefits and what can be done and produced uh, recycling such waste. So, that is the point. That is our point that we wanted to mention that uh, it is important to inform the public about this issue as well. Thank you. Thank you, Eugenia. Katerina, would you like to comment or add anything? 
Yeah, it's a pity that you couldn't be in our group, but uh, for sure you will have the report and uh, all the points uh, available. But we also had a, also within our inspiring story, uh, we had this example of forest sharing platform, which is uh, mainly for the forest owners, probably, but also uh, I'm sure that also public can get, can get insights and can get a lot of information. So this was also shared by our experts uh, sharing the inspiring story. Uh, so maybe that would be also of interest to you if we get you the information after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you, Eugenia. Let's now listen uh, to group number three or team number three. Um, so we keep on traveling now to the new forms of cooperation amongst forest owners or along the value chains. So who is the speaker now for this um, team? Is the speaker for team three present? Yes, it's Benjamin, but I don't know uh, if he has some internet okay. issues. So maybe we pass oh, to... Sorry, uh, so, sorry. <laughs> I okay. thought that, that was a... Uh, I was in the group four, so... <laughs> okay, Gr group three. Uh, so yeah, it was about the, the new forms of cooperation among forest owners or along the value chain. Um, we start this, uh, this group with uh, inspirative... Um, uh, example from France uh, with this uh, national national animation that is initiated by the rural network, the national rural network, um, to valorize all the EIP projects on forestry. Um, and uh, this is based on the operational groups uh, in France, but also in the different um, uh, projects in, within the H2020 projects that uh, that concerns forests so it's a national initiative to promote the, the eip projects and uh, above all the the thematic uh, about forestry uh, so that was the, the start and then we shared in the different groups uh, different examples in the different countries uh, and some examples uh, were very interesting uh, for example in spain uh, with this uh, platforms that uh, provide the certification services for small forest owners and uh, that uh, help them to, to sell the wood uh, a bit uh, better. Um, so it's a digital platform. And um, in France, uh, we have this uh, application, uh, this new app uh, that can help the forest manager or the forest uh, owner to um, mm -hmm. diagnose uh, the forest sand, to know uh, what would be the, the best species adapted to, to the site. And um, it, uh, it's based on different uh, uh, climate models and uh, species models as well to, um, to identify these, these um, three species. So it's a, it's a decision support tool. Um, we also add this example from um, Italy um, with the University of Florence, who um, cr created a spin-off uh, of which is called, uh, sorry, um, uh, the forest, oh yeah, forest sharing platform, and uh, that provides forest management to small private owners uh, throughout Italy. Um, so this um, this ex example uh, have uh, shown that. Um, one challenge, uh, a big challenge that we are facing is not new. It's the fragmentation of the forest uh, with this very, very uh, small uh, forest. It's out to, to reach the private owners and to have a sustainable management and to help for foresters um, facing the climate change as well. Uh, so that's uh, a, a big challenge we, we are facing. And um, we discuss also some possible solutions uh, like, um, of course, it's uh, promoting different examples, the best practices, the best knowledge that we, uh, we all have. We, all, we, all, uh, we are all part of the solution. Benjamin, so, uh, do you want us to go to the next slide? Oh yeah, yeah. Because you have two slides. Okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah, that's the second one. That shows the challenges and the possible solutions. So yeah, I was talking about the, 
promotion of the best practical uh, best practices, sorry, and the best knowledge. Uh, we also um, say that we we should work on a more collaborative approach to engage relevant stakeholders and private forest owners. Um, basically, we 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 did more uh, cooperation. Uh, between our organization, between the different actors uh, to promote those uh, best pra practices. And uh, we said also in the end that uh, uh, the important role that um, the EIP service uh, plays to gather, to go coordinate all of these projects as you have this, this data, this knowledge, and you, you can put us in, uh, in contact and uh, develop different synergies the different uh, subjects that are targeted. So thank you to the EIP service. Okay, yeah. thank you, Benjamin. So I'm just going to do myself a provocation. So everybody is talking that we need more uh, cooperation, more organizational innovations, more, more, more. But uh, the question is, did you discuss how can we actually go there? So you've seen some examples that uh, did it. You've talked about this dissemination of this information. Were there any more specific factors that you would like to highlight to promote and continue and replicate and uh, scale up and scale out the corporations? So to have more and more? Benjamin. Just for me or for... for yeah, the, just for you. Or just for me. Um, uh, we didn't answer this, this question because it's a hard one. <laughs> Um, I think the, um, the initiative I, I, I presented is uh, very interesting, and um, like because this uh, this national animation is uh, funded by the rural network and the Ministry of Agriculture, so it, it showed that the um, uh, the state is uh, supporting the, the forest sector, and uh, we know that usually we are complaining like forestry regarding the agriculture is. Uh, put aside. So I think for us, it's uh, it's um, very important to to see that, and uh, uh, we must use it to to promote the different projects, the different initiatives, and uh, and um, and uh, and hopefully uh, there will be more fresh projects on uh, on this uh, on this program. So uh, that's what we we try to discuss with the different countries how this uh, is working. And uh, if they have also support and they can uh, work together and know what is going on in the other region. So it's, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Benjamin. I know we cannot solve all the problems in, in one morning. So thank you so much for your reflections. Let's listen now to the room number four. So I'm sorry, Antom, I'm not going to give you the floor now. We need to listen. We'll have time a little bit to some common discussions afterwards. Let, let, let's listen to the new business models and marketing approaches, which is the group uh, number four. Okay. Who is the person to present group number four? Uh, it's me, Andre. Well, uh, well, we mainly discussed about the, the drawbacks for developing uh, business models. And well, there were some ideas. The main idea to promote uh, new business models and marketing approaches was to support the creation uh, of forest consortia for the vertical integration of the value chain. Uh, for example, taking care about the cutting and the processing of the, of the wood uh, in order to increase uh, the forest owner's revenue. Um, then regarding the, the drawbacks for innovation, uh, well, there were also other ideas like sharing knowledge uh, on the diversification of forest products so as to increase forest land uh, profitability. There is a lot of room for developing new business models and increasing forest profitability in the complementary, well, non-wood forest products. Uh, it's not being too exploited or explored nowadays. Uh, then there was an idea of creating uh, forest advisory services like uh, the ones uh, uh, that already exist in agriculture so as to uh, provide information and knowledge to, um, to small landowners uh, in order to create new business models and, make more, and take more advantage and improve the management of, their, of the forest land they, they, they own. Uh, <clears throat> 
Um, then regarding the, the drawbacks, uh, it's being said that there is a negative perception of, uh, of forest management. Uh, it's thought that, uh, well, uh, uh, in forestry, we cut trees, and uh, this is this goes against the production of ecosystem services and sustainable production, and this is hampering the the the, the creation of new business models, um, and also the create you know, like the business models associated with the provision of ecosystem services. Uh, in fact, uh, landowners have a negative perception on this because they associate ecosystem services with regulations uh, on uh, nature, nature conservation. And they see that they, if they promote uh, this kind of business models, payment for ecosystem services, they will get more restrictions and a lower profitability. It has been also pointed out that it would be interesting to increase knowledge and research on how sustainable forest management uh, will improve not only the provision of ecosystem services, but uh, higher profitability and, new and the opportunity for new business models. And well, it uh, has also been mentioned that there are also uh, other drawbacks to, to the development of new bis uh, business models, like the, the, the population of uh, rural areas. So there's not a workforce there. And well, the small holding is also a drawback. Uh, and so it's, it has been said that uh, um, it should be raised aware, aware uh, it should be researched, well, not researched, but uh, it should be seen the commonalities between small uh, landowners uh, in order to, to promote uh, management schemes and provide them uh, professional advice on this so that they improve the management of their lands and new business models can be created. And I think this is all. Okay, thank you so much, Andreas. So does anybody from our 110 participants present today would like to ask a question, make any provocation or any comment? Uh, Gerard, you raise your hand, please. Yes, thank you. I wanted to ask back, you mentioned the advisory, the forest advisory services briefly, but I was not clear was, did you want to say that you, we need those where they don't exist or do we need different ones? Because the traditional ones are too, you know, conventional, too traditional or, or, or was it said that they need to do different new things? because you were mentioning the new value chains and so on. Uh, well, Joan was the one who proposed this idea. Uh, Joan, are you here? Could you contribute? <laughs> are you here, Joan? Would you I, like to comment? I was in another. Uh, so, uh, could you repeat, please, Andres? Yeah, regarding the idea of creating advisory services like the ones that exist in agriculture in order to improve, um, yeah. well, to foster new, uh, new, new management, uh, well, new marketing schemes and all of that. Uh, Gerhard had, had a question on that. Gerhard, would you please? Yeah. I just wanted to ask back, what was the suggestion there? Do we need new or different? advisory services or what was it? Yeah, uh, um, the, the idea is to, to replicate the, the formula that uh, in some countries already work with, uh, mm -hmm. with the farming sector to have a kind of support to small forest owners association and structures in order to, to be able to, uh, to give advice and technical support to forest owners which are not involved in the market. It's, it's very easy to, for us, for instance, to, to, to work with forest owners that they already are in the business. Uh, we have them within cooperative, we have them in companies, we, uh, we have done a pro a projects uh, which are a vertical integration, for instance, to, to sell the, the core, but, but in some areas, there are thousands of small forest owners that they don't know even where the property is. And the, the, the work to, to find that people and to explain and to explain combines and to try to group them 
for instance, to do a uh, group uh, or municipal uh, forest plants, the, the, that uh, requires a lot of time and energy. And without a specific support, uh, we see it, we see as impossible to, to afford that task. Okay, thank you very much. So we are reflecting on a topic that is probably transversal to every every country, which is the presence of very small scale forests. We have also here some comments on the chat, <laughs> mentioning a little bit that uh, that you you mentioned a lot of the challenges and the conditions that were not there to create new business models and marketing approaches. And I had a little bit the question as well, which is what were the conditions that you found in the inspiring stories that make these things happen? Uh, but before I pass you the word, I will also pass the word to Eduardo Constantini, who has uh, one question, I think, one comment. And then we yes, can- Yes, the well. comment uh, comes from the intervention of Joan, and uh, it is uh, how many operational group uh, related uh, to forestry we have uh, in Europe, uh, do you know? Because I think that a way to to go towards uh, what he's saying is just through operational group. Uh, as far as I know, Eduardo, operational groups are more focused in specific uh, in specific topics uh, or sec uh, or initiatives that they are uh, already uh, functioning. So uh, sometimes it's difficult. For instance, we have two or three operational groups, one with uh, pine cones, another one with coal, and, and now we are trying to, to, to have another one with uh, about mechanization. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, I will say that this, this is, a, a, this is a, a master yeah, this is for this is an, an upper degree. This is not for the for the 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 forest the type of the profile of forest owners that uh, that I was talking about. Okay, thank you very much. So maybe we leave uh, unless you want to comment, Andres. Maybe we continue and leave some of these reflections to to the next uh, topics as well, uh, namely on the conditions that <laughs> exist and that we find positive conditions. Um, that uh, then can be replicated and created in order to support further these uh, forest innovations uh, of different types. Is that okay? So I think the group, uh, the team number five does not have a PowerPoint presentation. So I would like to invite the person that is going to present uh, group, uh, the team number five, uh, which I think is Fabio. Team number five is uh, new ways of institutional support or founding new associations. Uh, I think it's you, Fabio. Fabio, would you like to present the main conclusions from your teams? Yeah, actually, uh, I have some slides, but I don't know if I can share it uh, through my screen. So uh, maybe it's easier if I read, as you prefer. Uh, I, I think can you try. Can share. I think you can share if our host uh, is allowing. I think so. Try it. I try. Can you see it? It's coming up slowly. You can maybe start speaking as it's coming up. Yes, we already have it. Uh, now it's out of frame. We only see half. Okay, now it's good. Go ahead, Fabio. You are muted, so you need to. Now it's only on the left. Now, sorry, now it's only on the left. It's a bit cut, the screen. Uh, but I cannot do too much. Ah, no, to it's, good. it's good. It was okay. my screen. So I have to. Okay. Go Good. So then, uh, we were uh, discussed in the discussion with uh, two examples that are um, sub substantially a platform that uh, help and facilitate the collaboration among uh, institutions at regional level or uh, national level. So after uh, we discussed, we, we after the discussion, those are the main points that we uh, take as a final, final, final remarks. So the first point is about um, the importance of defining common topics that are relevant eh, for different actors that are involved in the in the in the activities that we want to so in institutional innovation and in the way we want to support innovation and related to this the second point the importance so to have a multi actor approach and and the strong leadership on on activities that then are selected to be to be let's say mainstreaming of course with the bottom bottom up approach Another relevant point we, we discuss is that it is important 
to provide this longer term institutional support or incentives and monitoring mentoring. And this is uh, in two ways. So that pay attention to sustaining facilitations. It is very important. And also the way that governmental actors uh, uh, act in, the, in this way. Uh, so to provide this support, uh, they have to facilitate, to fund and improve also uh, regulations. Uh, another point that is uh, connected to this, in particular to facilitation, is that we have to also recognize the important role of NGOs as facilitator, coordinator or moderator of innovation stakeholder networks. So, uh, uh, and this is also the basic for having this bottom-up uh, approach uh, that can be locally or broader terms. Uh, when we say also paying attention to, 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 to funding, uh, we, we enter in a discussion that was a little bit about uh, normal projects, innovation projects that we have, the time frame that's normally can around three years is a little small. And so we should provide uh, facilities to have a longer term perspective, particularly for forestry. Uh, then build on things that people involved uh, share. So also trying to, to to have sort of uh, avoiding langu language barriers, tradition barriers, or economy barriers. Uh, we need to also provide incentives for institutions, so in, the, in this case for uh, governmental um, bodies, to work outside the comfort zone if we want to engage on, for example, interregional setting or interregional projects, so to provide schemes that are broader than the, the, the normal boundaries or normal management of, uh, of, 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 of governmental uh, support or, or schemes that we have. And the very last, we have um, a discussion quite interesting and provocative of the way that we incentivize uh, the sector. So uh, a little bit uh, trying to facilitate the, the private investors uh, coming in. And so uh, that let's say that public investments should be focusing on providing the conditions to have projects, but then subsidies to, should be, let's say, less relevant, and we should have uh, in private investor or other form of investor that should get in and support very strategic projects. I think this is my, my at least takeaway. I don't know if my colleagues uh, from, the, from, the, from the group want to add on to it. Well, I would, I would like to maybe give the word to, to other people from different teams. I think it was super interesting, your insights as the other groups, of course, but uh, uh, what came up to my mind as a researcher is that it would be great to test your hypothesis and create maybe a project designed with these uh, suggestions to implement and see how could this actually um, enforce these replications of innovations that you are discussing, very good. So maybe some comment, question, provocation from uh, the participants. Would there, anybody would like to say, Gerard, you've raised your that, hand. Yes, thank you. That was quite well structured. I just have a question. When you mentioned NGOs, the role of NGOs, on which types of NGOs are you thinking? It is not my specific thinking. So maybe my colleague, I think in general, NGOs for me are, 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 are a little bit environmental NGOs, but maybe uh, colleagues can, 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 can better explain which kind of NGOs. It, it Would was, anybody like to compliment? Yes. It was, I think, maybe Carol, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. That, that was me, Carol. Um, in Inner Forest, we have uh, cooperated well with um, an NGO in Slovakia and uh, Slovenia uh, who sort of organized community forests uh, um, for their local community uh, and uh, inspired crowdfunding for um, yeah, restructuring forest management or uh, Waldumbau. Um, so that was a more forestry oriented uh, NGO. And in other cases, um, it was a very uh, ecosystem organized uh, NGO also working with crowdfunding and, and public participation in reforestation. And in a third uh, way, it was an NGO uh, focusing on, on supporting stakeholder networks for rural development, who had then applied to support a project focusing on forest management. So these are, these are usually NGOs uh, with 
very strong participatory aspects and a strong mission, but not necessarily on forests. Okay, Thanks. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Super clear. I'm going. Thank you very much, Fabio, for your great presentation. Uh, I would like maybe to give the floor to Guillermo Cardon from DJ Agri about a question that was uh, posed a while ago about the number of operational groups. And Guillermo placed uh, an answer here on the chat. So maybe Guillermo, would you like to speak out and uh, give the answer to everybody? Yes. No. I, I just I just felt that um, we have information to that we could provide on 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 that uh, on that issue. Um, basically, we we regularly carry out an analysis of the operational groups uh, information that we receive via the SFC portal, and uh, and one one of the areas of analysis that we do is uh, trying to um, sort the operational groups on the basis of themes. And um, from the last analysis we have from July uh, of this year, um, it all, well only five percent of the operational groups, let's say, uh, are uh, were assigned on the basis of the of the keyword of information provided by the member states uh, to the forestry theme. I, it's just just I wanted to contribute because that, that question was uh, was posed. Uh, I okay, thank you so them. much. Thank you so much. Very clear. I think it was important for everybody to know. And uh, it's actually interesting also to continue to follow these updates and information as operational groups grow and rise are born and die and so on. So thank you so much. Um, is there a place where people can continue to follow this information and updates on what's happening on the operational groups in Europe? Well, in the EIP Agri website, uh, there is uh, a database um, capturing all the operational groups, basically is mirroring the information that is in SFC, where you can also carry out a search on the basis of keywords uh, and uh, yeah, identify operational groups. So basically, okay. you can do searches using several uh, different... Yes. So basically, uh, in the information we have in SFC is mirrored in the IPAG database, uh, okay. which is public and, and accessible to everyone. Yeah. Beatriz already shared the link. Thank you so much, Guillermo, for your, your clarifications. Thank you, Gerard. I think we're going to listen to the last uh, group, which is focused on social engagement, participatory management, and social enterprise. Uh, the group has a slide, so I think it's time to share it and also listen to the voice of uh, the rapporteur for this group. Team number six, who is speaking? I will. <laughs> Um, okay, we were talking, uh, we already had two or actually sorry, who three is speaking? examples. Ineke. Who is speaking, sorry? Ineke. Ah, Ineke, hello. Yeah. Um, we had two uh, projects from Guadeloupe and we had the Interact project Femme for Forest. Uh, and then we, of course, had a lot of projects in the in the smaller groups. Um, let me see. For us, even if you talk about scaling and replication, we think that uh, the starting point is also always uh, the local community with uh, the owners and other actors, because there at the local point, uh, people are identifying themselves with the forest, but it's all so the place where forests are abandoned and where the need for forest management uh, is alive. Um, so it's important to, uh, uh, well, so if you say uh, you want to scale up, you cannot say there's one method and that it's the one you have to apply. So we said, well, you have a toolbox, a toolbox and it has a lot of models for forest minutes, but it was also a lot of participatory approaches. For example, the leader approach, because you always have to adapt to the local situation. Uh, digit digitalization uh, uh, might help. It's important to work on co-creation and co-design uh, to have a shared plan. Um, is it? I wanted to say more. Um, and it is important to have this big uh, discussion amongst the stakeholders about what the forest is and what, how we want to develop or to maintain the forest or to 
how do we have the first produced products for us? And the dialogue with society is also very important. Um, and we see it like you have a circle around the community and then you make the circle bigger and bigger and bigger. And at every level you have different stakeholders and also different types of involvement of the local and the regional institutions and also different types of funding that is needed. Um, and then we said in this dialogue, the young generation is very important because we have to understand what forests are meant for. If you want to have your wooden tools or wooden chair or anything, then uh, uh, the forest should also produce wood. And it's not only for recreation or other or ecology. Um, and we had a, a, an idea of a certification scheme. Uh, well, of course, you have to have a, C, a scheme, but you have also schemes that involve social innovation. And for uh, all of these uh, social innovation, there are three main points, capability, opportunity, and motivation. I think that's more or less our discussion. Okay, thank you very much, Ineke. This is definitely a very complex and super interesting topic. Uh, it's a topic in which I'm very much involved in myself. So I would love to continue talking about it, but I would like to pass the, the word to uh, the public, the participants, all of you. Would anybody like to make any comment, question, provocation, uh, controversy? Uh, anybody would like to say anything? Anton, now you have the space again. Uh, yeah, as a quick reflection, or uh, it feels like we think that digitalization and innovation is something we can control from organizations and, and um, governments and so on. Uh, innovation and digitalization is uncontrollable. We can support it, but it will have some things will just happen very quickly, uncontrolled, and it's disruptive. Um, I think that is really important to keep in mind that we will take digitalization will lead to leaps that is uncontrollable. <laughs> you grasp what I'm meaning. Yes, thank you, Anton, for this um, reflection. Thank you, Inika, for your presentation. I think um, <clears throat> just a small comment uh, innovations and disruption and these leaps in, in evolution always tend to challenge the mainstream and all of those that are adapted to a present state. So evolving into a new state, it uh, implies letting go some things uh, and letting come other new things. So the question is, what do we want to let go and what do we want to let come uh, and start? So before I pass to Gerard for final comments, Claire would like to say something. So Claire, very short, please. Hi, I'm involved in Desira and a Horizon 2020 project, and we're looking at the effects of digitalization for both agricultural and forestry and rural in the three different domains. And we're finding that everything's not always positive, but it's a, a case of trying to understand digitalization and uh, understanding the process. It's not always positive, but there are positives and negatives. Thank you very much, Claire. I would like now to give the floor to Gerard Weiss. Gerard, as our coordinating expert that has been helping us guide, tune and uh, orient the reflections of this day and a half. We've given some space him now for to, to make a, a small reflection on the discussions that we had today in the morning, but also a little bit of a wrap up and summary of the conclusions and reflections and highlights and main ideas from the last one day and a half as we are finishing uh, the morning of today and coming to the end of our seminar with this great participation. So Gerard, can you maybe give us your wrap up uh, of this one day and a half? Yes. Okay, I noted down a lot and tried to structureize the, the most important points that came up in many of these groups. And I have drawn 
but I cannot share it. I have it on paper. I'm a bit old fashioned, not digitalized. But my notes, they say, okay, I have three steps that are often um, emphasized, three steps in the innovation process and how to support it also. So first is the goals, to define goals. And there it was very often emphasized that this should refer to the region, local, regional needs, and they differ in different contexts. The next important step, second, is to connect stakeholders. And it was very, very often mentioned that you need many, many different stakeholders also within, well, another aspect, peer-to-peer -peer learning that can also happen within forest owners or forest holdings and forest stakeholders. But then you have many other stakeholders and especially it was mentioned new ones or the different ones along new value chains. So where you did not have much connection so far. So really new ones and platforms can help here to connect different stakeholders and to learn from each other. Again, to learn and you always have to adapt to local contexts because they differ in many, many in many respects and not for it must not be forgotten that you cannot directly transfer something from one region to another. Okay, and then the third step was okay to make a plan. It was always mentioned, and then this plan needs flexibility. So probably you do it totally different to the plan, but you need a plan before because without that, you just go in any direction which will not work. And again, Andreas said, okay, it's not a plan. It should be a story, a story, or I think that is means also a vision that can convince people and motivate people. Okay, um, how long have I talked? Do I have another minute? You have another minute. Go ahead. <laughs> Three measures to support. One is information, provision of information, learning, supporting any, there are many ways how to support learning and information. Then financing, there were interesting examples. One example, well, finance, fin one aspect is that in the beginning of innovations, it's often not, not needed a lot of money, but like innovation vouchers could be used just to help people that have ideas to connect to other partners or to find training or advisory services. So small bits of money can make a lot in the beginning, but financing may also be needed then a longer term financing so that not just small projects for three years is often too little, but often you need a longer support. And here I come to the last and maybe in my view, most important support is to have institutional structures that support that are longer term and that can support innovative projects. And that is, well, the EIP structure, for example. So not the activity that we are doing now or these operational groups. And I think also the leader instrument would be a, a, a very good and helpful structure or other institutional structures, associations that are there and can follow innovations for more than just three or five years. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much, Gerard. It was a pleasure to listen to you. It's now time for us to get ready to start closing our event. We will end the event with uh, some final reflections uh, about this seminar, but also about the follow-up and the work of the European Commission, DJ Agri and the IP by uh, uh, Kirsten Rosenau, who is the head unit 
is the head of the unit of research in you know, innovation in the Agri, the European Commission. Before that, we would like to make a small Zoom poll where we would like to ask you a few questions. Personally, before we do that, I would like to thank very much Beatriz Guimarães, who is the task leader and coordinator of this event. Thank you so much, Beatriz, and all the people that were together, all the facilitators, all the backup team, the technical team. As you've seen, we were in great articulation, creating a very interesting and stimulating event. To you all, from my side, I would really like to thank for this amazing participation, dedication, and presence that really resulted in this such interesting uh, content discussions. So before we go into the final reflections um, and comments, I would like then to ask our hosts to launch the pool and give us a few minutes for us to answer a few questions. Thank you. Please, it's now your time to evaluate. So if you have uh, any difficulties, you can say so. Otherwise, just uh, vote and enjoy the silence. Silence is great. Help us reflect and integrate all that we lived in this uh, one day and a half. We will soon listen to some final remarks. And we already have, many of you have answered, but still not all. So let's wait a little bit more. So we have uh, eight questions. The first one is overall, how useful was this seminar to you? The second question is, has the seminar increased your awareness on factors that can improve sustainable forest management and initiatives that work on solutions? The third is, has the seminar improved your knowledge on how to improve forest management? or foster cooperation for innovation. The fourth is, did the results from the seminar inspire you to set up any collaborations or start innovative or research initiatives? The fifth is, have you shared any ideas or examples in this seminar that will help others to improve forest management? The sixth, Overall, did you feel that you had enough opportunities to exchange ideas with others about factors to improve forest management and to foster cooperation and innovation? The seventh, have you met any new people or discovered new projects that you'd like to exchange, collaborate with after the seminar? And the eighth, overall, how satisfied are you with the format and organization of this online seminar? So by now, 84% of the people have um, replied. In conclusion, if we can already see more or less the results, the results are very useful and useful. Yes, there were a lot of factors and initiatives. Yes, I gained some insights. <clears throat> yes, a lot, or yes, I gained some, lot, some knowledge. Yes, very much, or yes, somehow the results inspired me. Uh, yes, I believe I made very significant and relevant contributions. 
and I contributed a little bit as well. Yes, very much so. I received good ideas um, and I helped uh, in this process. Yes, I will contact them to know more about practical examples. Uh, yes, we might develop a project together. So all this are conclusions from you and uh, only 3% of you were not satisfied. So all the rest were very satisfied or satisfied. So thank you all so much for your participation in this poll, your honesty, your contribution. This, uh, again, from my side was a very good event. It was a pleasure to be here. And now I think for the final reflections, while the last of you answer the poll, I would like to invite to the floor, Dr. Kirsten Rosenau, as I presented before, she's the head of unit research and innovation of DJ Agri. She has been responsible for the programming, managing and monitoring of agricultural research, uh, also in the EIP. So Kirsten, it is a pleasure to have you here today. I would like to give you the floor for your final remarks on this event on forest innovation. How can we turn forest innovation into practice? Thank you very much for being here. It's a privilege to have you here today. Thank you, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot for this very kind introduction, Andre. Uh, so, and good to see you again. Uh, so, uh, of right. course, our target will be to make the final 3% happy in the next seminar that we do, uh, because I mean, the first and most uh, uh, important uh, job that we have is that you go home with something that you've learned with new ideas, with something that you can practice where you are in whichever forest uh, of the EU <laughs> you, you are rooted or where you work. Uh, so, but the second part that Andre has also already mentioned, which I'm gonna focus in, okay, what lessons have we taken home or we taking home at EU level uh, and uh, which we're gonna take to the next level and where we're gonna work on uh, in the EIP system, but also in the research and, and, and innovation horizon Europe area that we work for. So, uh, I mean, it was a real pleasure to follow the inspirational discussions of this diverse and active com community of forest experts and practitioners during the last two days. And I, from my part, as it's a very long time that we've done such a, let's say, um, comprehensive event under the EIP, I felt that this was really at a, at, at a stage where this was necessary. There was a common understanding among all participants that the European forests play a crucial role in the achievement of the Green Deal's objectives. And uh, if we don't really get active now, we, we, we don't stand any chance at getting where we want to be, in particular with climate change. So the new EU forest strategy, as presented yesterday by Director Pierre Bascou, provides the policy framework for European forests to deliver on their share to our environmental and climate ambition. And it also highlights that it is important to secure livelihoods in rural areas and support the development of a sustainable bioeconomy by securing growing healthy and resilient forests in the EU. And the strategy puts forward a series of enablers ranging from research and innovation to training and advisory services, uh, things that we all have discussed intensively here, to support a successful implementation and practice. In this sense, the seminar and your contributions come just the right time, and uh, the, we will collect them also to make sure that the further input and where we work on both under the IP and research under Horizon Europe will make due use of this. So European forests belong to around uh, 60 million owners, whereby about 60% of the forest uh, area is privately owned and the majority being small properties, often lacking proper attention by their owners. In addition, there's also limited understanding on private forest owners' knowledge, motivations, and needs to manage these complex and diverse uh, ecosystems in a sustainable way. Social innovation was mentioned very often, and this can make a real difference on the ground by putting the focus on people, fostering innovation, enhancing cooperation and skills. So the excellent initiatives and following discussions have shown that there are already many, many, many good practice examples out there. Uh, so um, they're available to, to address uh, the challenges that we worked on, uh, be it climate change mitigation and adaptation, 
protection of biodiversity, provision of ecosystem services, and that this deployment of sustainable bioeconomy. In the discussions, also important success factors have been identified. This is key for us to take also home and make sure that we integrate this well in all the billions that we spend on future projects, be it under the CUP or under Horizon Europe. And uh, to really get those innov innovative solutions operational for foresters and widely implemented across Europe. For example, the need to promote in integrative forest management approaches to better balance the provision of ecosystem service and the production of timber. The importance to find new ways of cooperation among all involved actors and stakeholders, also beyond the traditional forest value change. The necessity to improve the management capacity of forest owners and access to meaningful advice. The requirement to develop new business models for valuing and funding sustainable forest management practices and the need to have access to the latest research and innovation. The above elements play an important role also with the European Innovation Partnership for Agricultural Productivity and Sustainability that the Commission developed since 2014. And the collaboration between researchers, foresters, farmers uh, and uh, works on uh, strengthening the forest knowledge and innovation system through further knowledge exchange to support uh, sustainable forest management is really key. And I can reassure you that this uh, works will continue also in the new program period. On the research side, we will further promote a science based contribution of EU forests to the Green Deal ambitions on climate neutrality, biodiversity, sustainable growth, amongst others proposed uh, by a dedicated European RNI partnership with the member states on forestry in the second part of Horizon Europe. It's key that we don't replicate, which is already done elsewhere, that we pull forces together and that we work together with those member states that want to particular invest into the area. So this will be a big initiative, also financially. And I would like to thank all the participants for your active participation and invaluable contribution to the seminar. I hope that what you have learned through the seminar will help you in your future work and that the contacts that you made uh, will remain with you and will result in many new partnerships and projects uh, for the next uh, um, uh, seminar. Uh, so then we will convince even those 3% that maybe didn't find it worthwhile this while and keep focusing on further developing what was best practice. Please keep in touch with EIP and inform us about your new initiatives and research on forests. So we are always ready and happy to communicate about that, also to make uh, uh, the other parts of Europe aware of what's going on on the forest. I was going to say in the field, but this is uh, this time it's on the forest. And finally, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to all the colleagues from the EIP Agri Support Facility and Community for Europe for the very good organizations of this event and of course my own team too. So once again, thanks for the participation and also a special thanks of course to Andre and Gerd for the great moderation. So thanks a lot and have a good day not only in the forests, but also elsewhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kirsten. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, Kirsten. So our main facilitator had, uh, had some technical problems. <laughs> so he lost the connection. He's trying now to reconnect. Uh, but uh, I don't know if uh, Tommaso came, uh, if we have some last uh, slide. So it's only uh, for the follow up of uh of this uh worship uh let's see i'm not sure if we are having a slide eh, Tommaso? <laughs> so no it's a video okay so i will tell live so uh we will compile all the results we have so far and we will try to deliver to you as soon as they are ready early next week uh we will uh publish already the videos of all the plenaries and the list of participants and all the uh most uh, uh ready outcomes and then for the report uh gerhard will prepare it and we will share uh with all the participants uh, also as soon as ready it will take a bit longer uh, but uh, yeah, early next week, uh, the first bits and then uh, the report uh, in some weeks after having uh, after having digesting all the 
outcomes from the seminar, which are quite a lot. So Gerhard, you will be quite pretty busy <laughs> the following days <laughs> with all the, the, the results. And happy that you all uh, contributed that much. And, uh, and also that uh, we hope that you enjoyed, you had also some fun and maybe some learnings and take home uh, messages. So I think that we are ready now to close. Enjoy lunchtime and see you soon. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.